Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I have any fast food. I don't want to believe I have any fast food. Yeah. Oh. Um, can you talk about the um, the manifesto and the the reason that capitalism won't work? I think that's the most important Actually, part. Actually, I can speak to that. Um, so the question that was asked, uh, do you think your camera uh, heard her? I'll just restate it. I okay. don't know if everybody um, heard it. So the question is, uh, she'd like me to comment on the Communist Manifesto and discuss uh, why capitalism is not in the long term feasible. Um, is, that, is that right? Okay. Um, the Manifesto, while it is still relevant, is not worded in a modern way. Um, the information age was, I think, outside of the, the imagination of people in the late 1800s for the, how much are the way our economy functions and the development of a strong service economy uh, with uh, manufacturing being outsourced was actually that, I believe, is the highest stage of capitalism with uh, uh, imperialism in the Marxist sense. Um, but that's, uh, it's not outmoded. It, it's, it is entirely relevant in the modern age, but it does probably need to be translated from 1800s academic English into uh, into the English of the aughts and the teens uh, would be more accessible. Uh, that's actually on my to-do list. But um, as to why capitalism is not in the long term feasible, um, there's a lot of background to that, but I can try and sum it up. Um, the capitalist system relies on exploiting labor. Uh, Excess value is produced when we create goods and services. We produce more in our lifetimes than we consume, ne not necessarily than we need to consume to survive. And there's a, there's a gap there, a surplus that we produce. You know, a farmer grows more food than his family needs to eat. He sells that surplus and exchanges it for goods and services in a fair economy. But the uh, the capitalist system is entirely built on taking the lion's share of that surplus and uh, expropriating it and justifying that with property relations. The reason Say it is not... In hmm? Say that in English. In English. Uh, what part would you like clarified, Joy? <laughs> I understand Speaking it, but I don't know dude. that everyone did. Huh? Speaking and dude. The part, I, about, the part about taking the, the capital gains and, and distributing them in property. Like I can give that in a case example. Um, suppose you work in a factory and you produce some a widget just some thing that your company sells, the company that you work for. You get an hourly wage and you produce widgets and the widgets sell for X amount of dollars. If your employer who is selling the widgets was paying you what you were producing for the company, he wouldn't be making money on employing you and you'd be laid off. That's the nature of the capitalist system. Expropriation is how it survives. Extracting that little bit off the top. Except it's not a little bit off the top. When, it, when it's explained, when, when profit is explained in uh, conventional economic classes, um, they, they talk about it as though it's this little piece off the top. The employer is getting this little, this little sliver, you know, he's getting his profit. In reality, it's, it's the, more like the lion's share. In business class, they mm -hmm. teach you that you need to make 50% or more? I'm not actually familiar with, with uh, the curriculum of modern economics classes. Uh, that I'm a mathematician by trade. So, I, I, I see you there, looking anxious. Would you like to say something? I could add something to it. Yeah, please. Um, There's two microphones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, um, there's a war between workers and the capitalists. And the workers, they want to make as much money as they can for the least amount of work. And big corporations, they want as much work as they can get out of us for the least amount of money. So we have diametrically opposing uh, interests. The problem is, is the capitalists are winning. And so because of that, we cannot afford to buy back the goods and services that we, the working class, produce. We run society. and. Because of that, the capitalists lay off more workers, and then it creates a spiral down effect, and there's always one crisis after another waiting around the corner in capitalism. It's, it's not that capitalism has gone bad. This is how capitalism operates, and, and plus it only works with a lot of 
uh, what they call entitlements and we call necessary services because um, the, the entitlements uh, basically hide um, the inadequacies of the system. If uh, capitalism cannot afford to provide living wage jobs, uh, health care, housing for everybody, and education, then we cannot afford capitalism. Mm -hmm. But, um, can I have a go at it? Yeah, I was, oh, you, you want in? Yeah, just one in. Okay, okay. Is this a socialist party? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I Give the rest of us a turn. I'm a we're going to have, okay. we're going to have somebody else speak in just a moment. I would just like to have a small go at it. Because I, I, I share the, the, the viewpoint of these other people on socialism in general. Imagine 5,000 years ago when we were just struggling all the time to find food, shelter, and stuff like that. That took up all of our working day. Work just means going out and trying to make a living. At a certain point, we developed enough technology, maybe agriculture, something like that, to where some people, we produced a bit more than was necessary for everybody to live and work. That's what we did. We produced enough, and so that was a surplus, and that gave us the opportunity to have a group of people live without working. Politicians. Yeah, they became <laughs> they became the priests. They became priests, kings, etc. Kings, etc. That kind of thing. Today, we have a system where everything that is produced, practically everything that is produced, is produced to sell. You know, um, it's true that not everything sells. You know, if I make my dinner for, for you know, my roommate or something like that, this is, this, is, this is not what we call a commodity. A commodity is something we produce to sell, and that's what we have a lot of. So you have talking about the factory and the widget. You have Joe Blow, and he makes one widget. The boss sells that widget for 15 bucks, and he pays 10 bucks to Joe Blow. That leaves $5 over. <laughs> this can get to be a, a problem after a while. Joe Blow, or the boss, is in competition with another guy who has a machine that makes widgets even cheaper. So Joe Blow tries to buy this machine and there's this competition to lower wages and to and to reduce the standard of living of working people people who sell their labor that's what most of us do we sell our labor on the open market that's what it means to be a worker what socialism means is that rather than production being for the profit of a small group of people a situation we have now where the vast majority of wealth is only controlled by the corporations by the corporate elite it's produced according to the need of human beings to survive and live on the planet. That, in a very short essence, is what socialism means. It means the democratic ownership of the, of the means of production and distribution. It means that we democratically own and control the way in which we, as human beings, live. Because that's all economics is. It's about living. How, how did we grab the resources out of the earth through our collective joint efforts. Look at the culture wearing. That was made by hundreds of thousands of people working all over the world. Every part of your life, hundreds of thousands of people work all over the world to make it. And yet, the ownership and control of that is in the hands of a very tiny minority of society. When we understand that we are the majority, when we understand that we can make the system run or not, when we understand that we have the power to say no, we can make a revolution. We can get a true democracy, a democracy of the ordinary people, because Alan's golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. Capitalism is incompatible with democracy in the last analysis because it concentrates control of the gold into the hands of the, of the brigands and thieves and murderers that control our society, that send our children off to war to fight for oil, and that make a profit by making you unemployed 
by throwing you out of your homes and by putting you in the streets because you can't afford health care. Every minute in this society, something like three bankruptcies occur, most of them medical bankruptcies. Do you know how many bankruptcies occurred in Canada, UK, Germany, France, uh, Taiwan, Israel, and Cuba last year because of that? Zero. Because they have public health care. 